We're back. Okay, so Michelle, you want to welcome us all? Do, do we need some introductions or does everybody know everybody? I think, I think everybody knows everybody. And as you say something, you can introduce yourselves. I don't think we need to go around for that. Okay. I like that Michelle, idea. Maybe yes. you want to get us started just to say something before we begin? Just Please? welcome. And we're excited that uh, so many of you could join us tonight and you navigated switching back to Zoom. Uh, I imagine you all are as excited as I am about this time. Uh, and just having the chance to uh, pause and dive into the sort of refreshment, exciting pathways, um, just sort of looking ahead at the Institute and uh, what's in store with Habits of Mind and all the hard work that's gone into uh, the website, and I know uh, many of you have contributed in one way or another or in multiple ways. So it's just a really exciting time, I think, to um, explore and see what's been created and just as always to be together again. So Benny, you want to take it up, take it away? Well, I think we have to first recognize that we have someone who has been certified as a new consultant, Carol. Yes. Congratulations. Hey, hey. All right, Carol. Well, and, and I was going to say, and we've been so fortunate to have you a part of the community from the certified school perspective. And so, yes, Ben, I thank you for acknowledging that. It's great. Carol, you want to say anything? You good? I'm great. Um, thank you. That was very kind. I didn't expect that, but I'm excited to be here and just going to keep plugging along. Wonderful, wonderful. Okay, so I think what we'll do is as each person, when you start to say something or contribute, you can just introduce yourself and that may help us to kind of make sure we know each other beyond the labels. But then we're also gonna get into small groups where you'll be able to you know, talk with just a few people and that should be good also. So I thought that we would begin uh, by just giving you an overview of why we're doing what we're doing and what it means to us. So I wanted to start just with the briefest history that I think many of you have been along with us for the ride of, you know, that we started just the Institute. And when we did, we had agreed, Art and I, when we first started talking about it, that we weren't gonna do an institute that was bricks and mortar, we were gonna make it all web-based. And that was a very forward thinking idea that we had. At that time, it seemed like rather remarkable. Right now, it seems like obvious. But the idea was that we were really just going to find our way to build a community because we were international, that we would build a community in which we would all be able to converse and be together without having to be physically in any particular space. And as we did that, we started thinking about the idea of how we were going to make this institute something that would be a way to continue to refresh, refurbish, make the habits of mind live and breathe over time. And so that's where we started. And now I think we started realizing as we looked at the legacy of the work that we've developed and that everybody has so graciously continued to refurbish and, and make better and bring in all new ideas, that we're ready for um, IHOM 3.0. And IHOM 3.0 is to really say that we want this to be alive and dynamic. And we want it to keep adding new ideas, new things, new ways of being together. And so with that in mind, we kind of felt like the best thing to do was to make the website really begin to be more a place of networking, a place where we could be together as we started when we started these Monday meetings, to try to really find our ways to be a community and to be a community of continuous learning. So Art, would you like to say anything as you think yes. back over our years of trying yes. to pull this thing together? Yes, I would. Um, you know, the Habits of Mind came together uh, about 1981. So that's like 40 years ago. That's older than some of you are. 
Um, so it's been a long time. And over the years, uh, we've seen a lot of changes in education, as you well know. Um, for example, at that time, uh, we were at a period in which people were very interested in test scores. And so it was cramming factual information into kids' heads and assessing them to see how much they remembered. Well, that didn't set too well. And so that's one of the, one of the reasons why Habits of Mind was something different and new at that time. But that wasn't the only change. Um, we've also had a lot of research on the neurosciences. And we find that metacognition and thinking skills are extremely important to be taught uh, and become a part of the curriculum. We didn't know that as much at that time. Since then, we've also gone through a period of social emotional learning. So we realized that kids were complex, not only were they thinkers and doers, but they were also having emotions and feelings. So all of that told us that we need to have something new and different that habits of mind has sustained itself over all those years and they're still as viable today as they were back in, in uh, 1981. Um, however, the technology has changed a good deal and we've just come through uh, the pandemic which has changed our delivery system as well. And so it's high time that we brought the habits of mind and our way of, of describing them and sharing them with the world, uh, it's, it's time we brought that up to date as well. So that's why we're rethinking what the website might be, what the delivery system might be, uh, how we prepare ourselves to talk with teachers and to certify them. All of this, we need to kind of rethink and say, are we as modern today as we were back in 1981? Are we as modern today as we were in 81? And are we continuing to modernize so that we think of the future? Exactly. And so with that in mind, we also decided that a lot of things that had to shift and change really required another partner, somebody who would help us be refreshed, be able to think in new ways. And uh, I think you all know already, but I will certainly make it clear that Alison Zamuda has been that incredibly wonderful partner for us. She has brought a fresh look. She is a venturesome, adventuresome thinker. And she is one who has been helping us. And I will say for, for both of us, she's been a refresher to our thinking, to sharpening our writing, to helping us clarify and be uh, able to join the 21st century with grace and with dynamism and with our incredibly important way of trying to think about where we are and where and who we're becoming. So that's been very important. And so Allison is now our co-partner and also our co-director. The other thing I wanted to say before I turn it over to Allison is that I see Paul Allison here and he is somebody who has been a wonderful support for us. And he's brought some new ideas to us too. So when Art said we're experimenting, we're experimenting not only with how we change our website, but also how we meet. So we're experimenting with Kumo space and saying, how does that work for us? When does it work for us? When is it best to use it? And now comment, which is how do we make the best use of the kind of uh, repository of a library that we have and how we're going to be able to make that work for us. So now our institute in its uh, web-like fashion has three anchors. We have the actual website. We have Kumo space where we can meet and greet, and know each other and find our way. And then we also have now comment where we're putting in our research, we're putting in some of our materials, our artifacts. So we're beginning to build that as a very viable and dynamic library. So with that in mind, Allison, take us to where we are and where we're going. So one of the things that's been so just enriching is being welcomed into the community, but also continuing to spend a significant amount of time each day, each week with 
Art, Benna and Michelle in starting to step back and imagine how can we continue to make Habits of Mind a vibrant, impactful way of growing and nurturing our next generation of learners and leaders. So to that end, one of the early things that we did starting about maybe 12 to 14 months ago was refreshing the icons for Habits of Mind. We wanted to make them more playful, look more like badges, so they have a, a circular um, shape, but also the idea that there's a, a freshness and a modernization to them. And that was sort of the early legs of the journey. The second part that we started to really lean into is we know from looking at um, uh, data analysis of what people click on the most is what are habits of mind. And as we continue to read the explanations, they really were a one size fits all um, perspective that sort of worked for some audiences. <laughs> and the idea of really stepping back and saying, how can we continue to clarify what habits of mind are in sort of written text that is short, that's concise, and that it's actionable. Uh, so that was something that Art Benna and I, um, we spent a couple of a couple of a couple of weeks <laughs> drafting that language. And you'll see when you um, go onto the website in a minute or two that there are four perspectives on how you can read habits of mind from a teacher lens, from a student lens, from a parent lens, and from a leader lens. I know, for example, that um, Dan Bullrath is um, taking the charge and drafting a, a community lens to add a fifth example. And I know um, uh, another um, Habits of Mind community member, Sor Soroya Smith, is going to start looking at a caregiver as opposed to simply a parent. So the interesting part of trying to step back and make it as accessible and approachable was one piece. But the next piece is really starting to think about how can we continue to grow the capacity of folks that are interested in habits of mind. So I know that we have um, Catherine and Pat and Juanita that are starting to play around with the idea of a mentor school experience. And how do we cultivate um, the mentor schools, not only in their growing commitment um, to habits of mind, but also to be sort of lighthouses along the way for people that really want to see what it looks like from that experience. Um, Craig uh, Gastower has taken the lead and started to think through the idea of an individual practitioner lens. So if there's not, if I'm not part of a school that wants to be certified, can I actually become an individually um, certified um, practitioner in habits of mind? And so those are sort of the areas and spaces that we've been actively growing and playing with to date. Um, but we want to, and again, uh, Benna, I don't know if you're gonna go ahead and share your screen. Um, we want to continue to spend time with you looking as a group at Habits of Mind and where it currently is. Keep in mind, you know, every day continues to be a little bit different. Um, so uh, hopefully you'll start to see, um, and Betta, I think you might want to go to an incognito window. Okay. Well, actually, I think everything's working here. Okay. Got it. Um, so... We have, are working with um, a fabulous web developer and business developer on the website itself. So that's been significant and impactful. It's also been very complicated. You did know that the Habits of Mind, the Institute site was down for several weeks um, because the amount of um, uh, challenges of sort of taking it down and building it back up in a strong, stable space was um, more of an issue than we realized, but it is now official. So if you go into. Okay, there we go. <laughs> okay. So if you start to peruse the website, um, and again, I don't know if folks have already done this and we don't want to start walking through each step. There's a space for you to go, go and play with it. And as you are in your small groups, 
what are habits of mind if you click on that for a second you'll start to see that there you can not only see the 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 new iconography but you also can start seeing and looking at it from a range of different perspectives so in this particular case you can see for leaders for students for parents and for teachers so we also wanted to make sure that people can actually um, access one habit of mind at a time but if they want to actually have the entire 16 habits from their perspective that's great so as ben is scrolling down as you are right now fantastic so again we wanted to make it something that um, again pops that is impactful um and again these uh drop down menus um so you can see for teachers then you can scroll and see the next one for parents we wrote these very deliberately so that um we were wanting to make sure that we're not saying different wildly different things <laughs> to different audiences so that was something that benna art and i spent a significant amount of time making sure that there was um a real connection and flow in what each audience actually was hearing and listening to. So just, so, just to add to that, Allison, for just a minute, uh -huh. um, what, what we've been learning a great deal about from people is that they really want to have the whole picture. That's these, which are, this is the article that we wrote for each, from each perspective, where you get everything, not just one habit. But we also found that a lot of schools in getting started would do, like I was just talking with a school today where they were saying, we do one habit a month. That seems like a fairly typical idea that many people use, sometimes less, sometimes more. But this really then begins to give them a way of like, oh, when we're doing creating, imagining and innovating, then we can just go and we can look at each one of these perspectives so for this particular school that I work with today, they discovered this already on the website and they were blown away by it. And so the first thing she said, the principal said was, oh, I already send home a newsletter every month when I say, okay, we're doing listening with understanding and empathy. And then I look at the parent one here, I clip that out and I send it to them or I send them over to the website to look at it for themselves. But now it's really helping them support that bigger picture of the kids who are looking at it from their perspective, the parents who are looking at it from their perspective, and it just brings that richer picture. So that's really the thought behind this particular page, which we found when there was data that was uh, analyzed about everything, what are the habits of mind was the most important question that people were asking when they first entered our website. Google searches, everything else. The first thing that was being asked was, well, what are they? So we tried to be as open about this as we could be so people would not be puzzling about, so what are we talking about? So uh, that, and Benna, you're right on where I was wanting you to go to. So you'll see that about us, if you click on our consultants, this actually came, um, live as of four or five hours ago. So again, it's very much a work in progress. I am hopeful, knock on wood, everybody's here um, that should be here. Um, but as you continue to go through, um, we also wanted to clarify um, that uh, you should see your name and that one or two sentence explanation. Um, but if you we also want the picture, mm -hmm. then you see the full Right. Then you see the full description. We also made a decision as to um, how we wanted to present people. So based on some of the advice that we got from the web developer, you'll see that there's no contact information um, underneath your name. There's no email address, no Twitter or what have you. Um, the um, intention was to make sure that if people are interested in um, somebody specific. So if I really want to work with Catherine, I can go ahead and enter that into um, the, 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 the form or the email that I send to the lead certification coach, which is Michelle. Um, otherwise, Michelle is um, a helpful steward in terms of 
engaging in an appropriate match based on um, location, but also based on the client. Um, so again, um, that's something that we made a, a, a choice about. Um, the other thing is, Ben, I don't think that people are organized in any which way. Am I right? No, it's but, randomly, it's randomly done. Yeah. So at some point we may want to make it not randomly done or alphabetical order or parts of the world, but basically um, we did first and foremost want to get everybody up here. And you can start to see that we do have a fair number of consultants, which is fantastic. And even the name consultant is also a shift in practice away from professional trainers to consultants and the intention of um, having um, people to, con to, to be um, uh, in, in a way that they can actually continue to think and work and grow ideas with one another, primarily in a virtual space. Um, but some folks may want to continue to, to work, not just in their own localities, but also continue to um, traipse around the world and, and do work on behalf of the Institute. Just a quick so, question, because I had the consultants opened on a, diff on, on a different device. And not everybody that, that I'm seeing on Ben's screen is showing up on my personal screen. So I don't so, know if some are not published yet or what, I don't know. Yeah, I think that one of the things that we've learned the hard way is um, it takes a while <laughs> for it to actually move through the country. So sometimes um, Ben can see it and I, I can't, that's why I said I need to go to incognito window. So it does take some time when there is an update on the page for everyone to see it. So hopefully that will work its way out. If that's continuing to be an issue, um, you can always go ahead and um, send me a quick email and we can um, run that up the flagpole. But then I was thinking it would probably be more helpful to stop sharing. You want to see the, the Institute screen. partners or I'm sorry, say what you were going to do. I was going to say stuff because I don't want to, I don't want to spend too, a, a fair bit more time. I would love for folks who um, be able to stop sharing the screen, Benna, and then explore it um, in their own um, individually or in small groups. Um, we did make a, a, a Google slide deck, um, as you can see, if you can click that open in the chat. Um, we're going to put you in small groups so that you can begin to explore and think together. So your group might say, you know what, we'd like to um, take five minutes and explore on our own and then come back. Or if you're a group that loves thinking and talking and exploring one screen at a time, that's cool. But I think that's the intention for the next um, 15 minutes to begin to take a look at the website in more detail and begin to suggest what are some of the, the, the strengths and, and insights and, and, and happy things that you're noticing. And what are some of the areas that can continue to be improved on and make better? So it might be something as small as a typo or as big as I have another fabulous extension or idea. Um, that's something that we definitely want to capture in your small group setting. So that's in the chat for you to find these slides. And um, Allison, do you want to do the breakouts? I can't, Ben. I because you oh. are the, yeah, so. I'm the one, huh? So assign automatically. You're gonna assign automatically. And why don't you put people in um, groups of three? So it says recreate three breakout rooms. Is that how I do it? No. No, you assign three people to a breakout room. So how do I do that? Sign manually? Nope. Why don't you go ahead and make me host? See if I can do it. Yeah, I think that's better. <laughs> that's, that sounds like the right way to do it. <laughs> There's 17 people, so would you just divide it? Allison, this is Ryan Kusuda from Waikiki School. I'm going to have to jump on to another meeting, but okay. it's really good um, seeing all of you folks here, and um, I look forward to kind of continuing the work that Bonnie was able to establish with Habits of Mind. So, Oh, Ryan, we, we welcome you and we're yes. so happy that you're here. I'm so I'm, happy I'm, you're here. Thanks for the invite. And just know that um, 
we're a willing and able partner here in Hawaii, right? And um, I look forward to just uh, continuing to learn and grow and work with this fabulous team. Okay. Thank Aloha. you. Thank Aloha. you. Aloha, everyone. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and um, create the breakout rooms now. So again, before I do that, hopefully folks have opened up the chat and they've identified the, that Google slide. If you're, um, you just have to basically pick a lane. So hopefully group one is taking that slide, if you can see it, should be pretty obvious. But if you have a question, let me know. I can bop around in between rooms but I'm creating the rooms now. So everyone should have an invite now. Paul, you're moving in a room too? We can't hear you. Where's the invite? It's uh, in participants. Or, wait. I, I oh, there it is. I found it. I found it. Okay. Okay. What? So Allison, tell me what I should have done. No, I'm sorry, move me because I don't I can move it. you. It's all good. Okay. Oh. Uh I'm going to move you to a different room then. Okay. Got it. Did you get it? Oh my gosh. I want to throw up right now so bad. <laughs> I was like, hold it in, hold it in, hold it in. So I, I, I was going to, I'm going to make you, because we're co hosts now, right? Yes. Okay. So yeah, I'm not, I'm not doing it. Uh, so in terms of what you needed to do, um, you were you were doing it right. You just needed to divide how many people. So if you hit, I think if I, I hit five and then it said that's two to three people. So then I hit four instead. So that was three to four people. Okay. So you want me to close everything out? Um, no, I should be okay. I mean, so we said... You want to stop recording, by the way? So let's just hear a little bit from you, you know, kind of what, what did you see? What made, what did it make you think? What are you wondering? You know, the see, think, wonder thing. And <laughs> then maybe just a little bit about, you know, like what you've observed about the idea that we have these three options that we can continue to grow and work with. So some of the thoughts you have about this and Kumo space and how it all weaves together with now comment, how we can focus on that. And then our next session, next time, we're gonna take a deeper dive on some of those things to really begin to think about, you know, how we're growing and learning with them. So any, any thoughts? Sure. Um, so, so, so we were looking at the, the resources um, and, and first of all, it was it was great to see so many there that are easily accessible. And I think that that really does give a newcomer a good taste of what's to come um, or what could be possible, let's say. Um, but what we were wondering there um, is um, could that be taken to the next level? So um, one, one example there was we had a lot of generic rubrics. Um, and I actually think that that's a good and natural starting place for a school. Um, but then I think as schools evolve, they become more linked to um, problem sets um, and activities. So we were wondering then if there could be a next step kind of thing, what this might look in your evolution with examples of how the habits are linked to activities and problems and maybe some exemplars of student work there because I think that's always really, really useful for educators to see what actually it might look like with students thinking in the classroom. So, you know, we're thinking about that and I'll say this out loud and then again, we can keep 
working around it. We feel like there's going to be a distinction in this website once we finally figure it all out. That will be a, I just want to be acquainted and find out what's going on and pick up a few free resources that help me to get started. And the deeper dive that we're thinking might be a membership network. And that would be where we're curating and we're reeling like some of the materials that you have, Philip, I don't think it's just out there. I think you have to really be have a deeper understanding of what you're doing and how you're thinking about it to then take some of those examples and use them as potentially inspiring rubrics for yourself. So there's, I think, a distinction between what's the surface of what you know and what's the deeper dive. And the deeper mm -hmm. dive will be more curated. It will be something that will people will actually pay for because we're going to have to manage it and make it happen. But I think mm -hmm. it'll be more the benefit of becoming certified, of really taking that deeper look at what the habits are all about. That's the thinking we have right now. So yeah, anyway, Jack, we're open. I, I understood, but I, and actually it's what um, Juanita said as well, that, you know, kind of like, you might want to not give too much away there because that's the next step to actually, you know, get some consultancy, um, you know, so again, that, that's another opportunity, isn't it? But, but maybe one example, you know, to say if you're interested in linking these to authentic performance assessments, here's an example and some student work but this consultant is the way to go. Contact mm. here, get membership, whatever. So it's a taster. Yeah. Right? That's yeah. a carrot, <laughs> but not too much. So would, we, can, we, we have to think that through. That's our next level of work we're going to be doing. Ben, I didn't look thoroughly at everything, but are there like testimonies of people saying how it affected their students or their school day, schools or their, you know, academic growth or anything like that no and that would be wonderful I think that would be interesting to to get some administrators or even teachers or even students parents um testimonies parents too yeah if you're trying to cater to all four audiences you should have mm -hmm. testimonies from each level right Carol some of the the parents at, at Council Rock the, the things that they were saying when we were there for your certification were amazing. So maybe we can investigate some of that. I definitely have parents who would be happy to make a contribution. Absolutely know some. And I have alumni from Waikiki School. Um, there's a video on YouTube, I believe, um, from two years ago with the alumni talking about habits of mind. Hmm. Yeah. We have a number of those from Waikiki, really fine videos of, you know, kind of a reflection of the work that you've done. So I guess in that sense, I never thought of it much as a testimony, but I guess it is. Mm -hmm. I remember that with that work, it, we interview, you interviewed people and, and that's how you got that information. Yes, yes. Um, and we have a videographer, um, who's working on one right now for us uh, with how it all started. That's going to be the theme and art was part of that and, and Bonnie as well and myself. I must share this anecdote because you're going to love it. Um, so Benna, you know that we were having the WASC visit um, the week before last. Um, unfortunately, it was all virtual. Um, but anyhow. Tell, tell them what a WASC visit is just so that they know, Phil. Oh, so it's the Western Association of Schools and Colleges. Um, it's our accrediting body based out of California, but they're very, very popular actually in the Southeast Asian region. They're, they're, they're the um, most prominent accrediting body. So anyway, they look at all areas of the school and they talk to teachers, parents, students. Um, but I was lurking in a lot of these meetings because I had to set up the links. Right? <laughs> And it was with the um, meeting with the students and they were asking about the habits of mind and how they were applicable outside of school. And one student said that their mum and dad 
resolve their domestic differences at the dinner <laughs> table through the lens of the habits of mind. And I almost died and went to heaven. <laughs> Isn't that beautiful? That's funny. But you know, that, that would be another source of testimony because I know, um, and Catherine, you vouch for this, when, you, when the people came to accredit Waikiki School, yes. they said they had never seen a school that was so, had such a common focus or something to that degree. Is that correct? Exactly. The, everything is through that lens at Waikiki School. And um, they were very impressed with what it brought to the students, the teachers, and the collaborative learning that was going on at the school. And um, we're actually, that was several years back, but guess what? Next year, Ryan is going under the WASC again. So we'll, they'll be doing WASC um, again next year. So it'll be interesting to do the comparative of what happened. Well, and also Waikiki was a three-year blue ribbon school. Now, yeah. Well, also, one of the interesting things that, that oh, I'm sorry, Art, go ahead. Were well, you gonna I say more? That, that, um, that the Waikiki School had two teachers who were teachers of the year from Hawaii and Catherine Kane was one of them. Oh, you let my secret out, Art. Oh. <laughs> That's my secret. No, the world should know it. <laughs> Thank you, Art. He's he's always um he's always singing my song. Thank you. <laughs> you well deserve it. It's a good tune. <laughs> okay. I'm wondering. I I don't know what you all have planned, but I'm wondering if bringing these testimonials to the April meeting would be useful to do. It's a good or, idea. Maybe. Like bring a video, bring a, a quote. <laughs> so some way to maybe, collect them. Yeah. <laughs> maybe that's the segue to um, what we're thinking about for the next meeting, just so that we make sure that we don't hold ourselves beyond. Um, and the idea is that we would like to give an opportunity for people who are really exploring some of these new ideas to share so that we can get feedback from one another. So one new idea is Craig, who's doing this work on an individual pathway where teachers, it's, it's, we put it on the website, you may have noticed it in certification that it said coming soon, individual pathway. And that coming soon, we've had like six or seven people already say, tell us when it happens. This is just what we've been looking for. So that came as like kind of, okay, we thought it was a good idea and it seems like it is a good idea. And so Craig is gonna share with us what he's learned and how we're thinking about it and so on. And then uh, Philip, I thought you would share a little bit from the research group because everyone who is here doesn't necessarily go to the research group. And also then I would like to see how you're showing it in now comments so that people could really look at now comment, get a better picture of what's there and what we're and how to really interact with the material that's there. So I thought that was like another thing that you and maybe Paul could do together to kind of get us there. And then um, I think that um, Juanita and Pat and Catherine, if you could share with us what you're learning about mentor schools and how you're thinking about that 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 would be very valuable for us to just explore and know more about. And then Liz, unbeknownst to you, I'm supposed to ask you, <laughs> but I think you'll be willing to help us think through how we would do a gallery of some sort, like the showcase kind of thing that we do with District 30. What would it look like if we had an ongoing kind of gallery of practices? So um, hopefully you and I will have a chance to talk about it and think about it. And that's something that we could begin to think about. And that's you mean for again, these people I, here to present. Is that what you mean for each of these? No, no, that would be lovely. We could do that. Oh, what did I you mean? Just for the, you know, just like this whole idea of 
when we're showing all those resources, what would a gallery look like of, as a gallery of practices? But, you know, I like your idea that at least since Paul stimulated the idea, if everybody came, if we start with your idea of testimonies, that may be where to start. Maybe the, let, let's see if we can, everybody can either send in advance or come with testimonies, some comments from teachers, from kids, from whatever. And let's see what we can do to make that into something that's shareable. Benna, was uh, James Anderson going to share the, his app at one of these meetings? Not at, not at this meeting. We felt because it's so intense and deep that it's a full hour. It's not just a five minute share. Okay. So we thought that when once the three of us, you and Allison and I have gone through it, we're going to then talk with him about setting up a time <laughs> different from this time okay. where he'll have the full session just on the app. Good. Ben, so I, just, I, I just want to advocate for the focus that you shared and that it's that's a lot for an hour. Mm -hmm. And I think one of the things that's really valuable is for uh, people to be able to not just hear, for example, from Craig, but also to have some space where people can um, maybe it's put things, you know, it, again, navigate through Kumo space and now comment and share their ideas. And so I think the balance of that time, um, it, I would almost, I mean, I would almost say if we had the focus for the May meeting, maybe the testimonials, um, I love that idea and I don't want us to lose that. Uh, but I definitely would advocate to make sure that people had enough time to sort of sink their teeth into what everybody was presenting and give, um, you know, some responses and comments and connections, because I think that'll help shape things. I, th I think that's wise. We can, we can play with it. Yeah. I talk to Liz about 10 times a day. So maybe <laughs> we can figure out something that we can do that would make sense and wouldn't be distracting. But um, I was just throwing it out because I saw her face and I was thinking, oh, you know, I really want her to do something to help us to get I it organized. And she's so fabulous. skillful with that. I think but, it's fabulous. I don't want to lose that at no, we all. We won't lose it. Yeah. We won't lose it. But, but what you're saying, I think, is important in saying, I imagine that the next meeting will be at Kumo Space and not here. Because I think people can then, the way Craig so artfully gets us to tables and each yes. table has something that's, you know, then we can go and follow. So people who are interested in mentor schools can go join Catherine um, Kat and Juanita and people who want to know more about individual pathways. So we can do that. I think that would work. But I also feel like we should explore now comment in a way that's a little bit more uh, purposeful and not just yes. kind of you know, see if you can go there sort of thing. I would absolutely agree with that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's just, you know, there's it's so many options resource. right now. Yeah, yeah. But what a fun time, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a lift in a time when people are feeling so kind of discouraged by everything that's going on. It seems like we need, oh, Paul, one thing. Okay. Would you mind just sharing the beautiful work that you've stimulated around the um, looking at Ukraine and the way you're getting, because people here might want to join that group. I try to um, let people know, but I think it's really important. I can share the, the yes. Um, you mean the, the collection the, where we, we've begun to build? Your TTT. Yeah. Um, I'm, 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 it'll take me a minute to find it, but I'm <laughs> sorry. I got the invite from Paul. I get, I always follow everything that he sends that's inviting people to so, do things. And because... we'll be talking about it again this Wednesday at 9 p.m. Eastern. But um, the, the idea is, the question is, you know, how are you dealing with this? And how a third grade teacher is dealing with it is totally different than how a middle school or a high school teacher might do it. So, but collecting resources together 
and then being able to annotate them um, on now comment is, is what we're up to. Um, but so let me, let me just find the, the link to that part. So sorry. Yeah, if you can just put it in the chat for people, I was just thinking that we have yeah, so many classroom teachers who would probably really welcome having some resources. Yeah. So, yep. I am doing one of them. Um, there, there's a student who is working on two, but here's the one that the teachers have put together. Um, And again, you know, nobody is saying that these are the best resources. What we're really saying is, um, wouldn't it be great if we all sort of together began collecting things that we're using in our classrooms? I mean, it's just but, such a critical moment and something that, you know, I think the teaching community, the learning community, we're, we're all struggling with how to really work with our children how to help them to understand. So I think that's, you know, if you if you want to join Paul's group, they it's an open source welcome, welcoming group of people who are thinking about those questions together. We meet every Wednesday, again, nine o'clock Eastern. I don't know what it is in Cambodia. No, I'm teasing. <laughs> I think it's not and, and it's just I think it's not nine a.m., right? Yeah, it is actually. <laughs> yeah, so no, yeah, that's doable. That's doable. Yeah. Like yeah. my, my 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 God, um, I just you know listening to this, I, I just had two thoughts. You know, at the high school level, you'd want to be getting them to do some kind of model UN, right, to get them around the right. you know negotiating table. How can we resolve this using the habits of mind, right? <laughs> but then there's definitely a critical appraisal of information as well with so much propaganda, et cetera. So you can do compare and contrast of different news reports. Oh, there's so much scope here. I need to yeah. get onto my uh, curriculum team. <laughs> cool. Okay, well, I just, I just, I didn't mean to take you by surprise, Paul, but just seeing you there thank reminded you. me. Cool. Yeah, yeah. So um, thank you all for being here and for being so energetic and collaborative. It's helpful for us to keep, you know, going with this, because I think that more than ever, the habits of mind have become something that people are looking for and are trying to think about the importance of it all in their work. So thank you. Good night and good thank health. You. We Have appreciate you. Yeah. Well, thank, thank you, everyone. Thank you. Have a great night. Thank Bye, you. Art.